So I'm going to show you how to use the card access system, the Secure 9000. So it's made by Software House. It does all your door controls and card readers. It'll be what you use to set up schedules for unlocking the main entrance, how you'll add personnel to the database so that they can have a card that you, to use at the card reader. It's, it's uh, server driven. The uh, server is located in the MDF room. Um, the IP address is 10.203.22.33. That'll be important. You'll need to know that um, IP address when you add a workstation client to be able to access and program the system. Uh, right now there's two workstations already on provided in the high school. One is in the main office and one is in the custodian's office. Um, there is unlimited clients so you could create a workstation that does badge. We, we've provided a badge printer. We haven't installed it at either one of those locations but um, that badge printer could be put anywhere in your district that can reach this IP address and then you can print badges from that location. So I'm going to go over some of the different settings and how you could actually add how you add the client. Again it's loaded already on two machines in the school and the software will provide the software so that you can add it to other machines as well. I can't demonstrate it on this uh, laptop. It has to be a 64-bit machine but I'll show you where we're keeping the file and um, I'll run through the different settings that you're going to have to input when you do it. I just won't be able to show you the actual act of installing it. Um, so right now I'm remote desktop into the server 10.203.22.33 and in the documents folder on this machine I've put the file that you'll use. It is a zip file right there, Secure 9000 version 2.90. So this zip file, you could copy this, put it on your machine, and you would install that software. This is the server that I'm looking at, and the client's already loaded, so I can't go through the procedure. But when you install the software, it'll ask you for a standalone system, or it'll be the client only, and it'll ask if it's a local host. You're going to hit the drop down menu, and you're actually going to enter the IP address of the server at that point. Um, that's the only part that you could mess up. So, you, what you're doing is telling the client what the IP address of the server is that it's accessing. So once you go through that, just follow the prompts, install it, and it's, um, it'll come up no problem. When, when it's in, after it's installed, I'm going to close this real quick, it'll load two pieces of software. It'll load the administration workstation, and it'll load the monitoring station. Or monitoring station is, I'm going to open it up real quick, Monitor station is where you see the live activity. It's like a report log of all the doors being opened, the people using their card swipe, uh, their, their card access, going through a door. Um, it's also where you can manually open a door if you're just doing a momentary unlock or something. So I'm going to hit, just to show you that one real quick, I'll go to doors, and that pops up all the doors in the system. So say I wanted to go to the emergency I'll, I'll pick this one the vestibule these these numbers in parentheses are the architectural numbers they are the numbers that show up on your drawings um, so you could always refer that to if you have a hard time finding the door so right now I'm going to right click on that door and I can momentarily unlock if I click that, it's going to pulse the lock and let them in there. If I wanted to do it on a schedule or for a longer period of time, I'd right click on that. I could select unlock 
and here's where you would enter in the time that, uh, period that you want to unlock it. This would be for one-time uses, um, not, not something that's going to happen every day. I'll, I'll, I'll go into details how you make, say, the morning unlock for the main entrance is a common one that's used. Um, say, when the kids are entering in the school, they'll unlock the main doors from, I don't know, 7.45 to 8.15, whatever the period of time most of the kids are coming in the schools. And then it'll automatically lock again. Um, that'll be done in the administration workstation. We'll go over that in detail. So typically in the monitoring station, that's really all I could see you using. Let me close this window. Yeah, so, so, so I'm just going through this. It tells the status of uh, doors. Like when I go to this screen, the door, it'll show the main, this vestibule, which is one of the main entrances. The door is open. It's held open, meaning it's blocked and, 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 and held open for longer than the 15 seconds that it's allowed to be open for. But the lock is physically locked. So those are the those are the things you can tell from this screen. Again, the only thing really you're using for the monitoring other than the event log, as you see, these are all people that have been using the doors or coming in as, as we go and doors have been open and things like that. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the monitoring client. Just gonna minimize this. I'm going to go back into the administration client because this is where most of your setup's going to happen. And in this, uh, I'm going to go through these tabs, just show you real quick, and then I'll show you each tab um, in more detail. We have the option and tool, tools tab. If I double click on it, the only thing you'll really be using here is the back, the the backup, system backup. I'm gonna click on this. Um, right now it's backing up to the hard drive on this server. Your IT group probably has a backup file or backup disk that they would wanna back it up to. You just have to add that drive to this computer and then they can select in here that drive. That way it's not on the machine. It's not always a good idea to back it up to the same machine. That way if the hard drive fails, you lose the backup. So um, your IT group will be the ones to talk to there. They'll be the ones that would set this up. So this is where you would make that change. Under options and tools, that's really the only thing that will be used. So I'm gonna click on hardware. Under hardware, there's this tab, Somerville High School. And if you hit the little arrow next to it, it expands it. What this is is these are all the controllers where all the wiring goes back to. So they start out labeled by the IDF closet numbers. So in the IDF A145, there's two, two controllers. If I expand this controller, it shows these are all the doors that are connected to that controller. So there's can be up to... 16 doors in one in one controller. Not all of them are going to have that many, but um, it can be 16 in one controller. Um, we're going to go in. All the doors are programmed and set up. We're going to go through how you can create a uh, have a door follow a certain schedule to unlock, and we'll go into that more detail. But this is where that'll take place is in hardware. Under personnel will be the next tab that you're going to use a lot. I'm going to hit this drop down. You're going to see badge layout. Typically, you'll just do that once. We'll go through how to set up badge layout. Clearance will be the user groups. You're going to give them access to certain doors. This is where you'll be doing that. Personnel. Personnel is where you'll be adding people and assigning a badge to it. Personnel type, um, this will be something you set up originally and then after that when you add a personnel 
you'll, we'll, we'll go over where you're adding a personnel type. So that's where it'll be programmed. Configuration, I'm gonna close out of that one. That's really all that's gonna happen in that one. Configuration is the other tab that you'll use. You are going to, I'll show you how to create a group. A group would be doors. So when you create a clearance, you would give a clearance a set of doors and instead of selecting each door individually you can set them as groups so say you wanted to have a clearance that allowed access to the elevators rather than selecting all different all the different elevator levels you could create a group that included all those levels so now when you create that clearance for the elevator access you will select the door group that you created that was for that included all the elevators Operator. Um, operator is anybody that has access to program this, the log on that will actually log on to use the system. Um, there won't be very many of you, but you're, um, you'll, you'll go into personnel. First, you create an uh, operator, which just tells it what access. Most of the time, you're going to do the administration law, um, access, which is going to let you have full, full control over full programming. You're going to create a username and a password. And then when you create a person, say Joe Smith, you would assign him an operator. So um, we'll go over that real quick. A schedule. A schedule is when we talked about the main entrance, say Monday through Friday, 745 to 815, we're going to unlock the doors. The way it follows that time period is by creating a schedule. So we'll create a schedule for a different different unlock events and and then we'll assign that somewhere else in the system another thing that follows so privileges uh, or clearances also follow schedules so say the teachers have access to they want access to the doors only from 6 30 a.m monday through friday to 3 30 p.m you would have to create a schedule so that when you create that clearance you that clearance will follow that schedule it's only good for that those periods of time and that would be it under there card format and keys is originally set up you won't be using that one all right so that's an overview of what we'll be covering all right we're going to go over how to do the badge uh, create a badge layout it's in the administration workstation It'll be under personnel. Hit the drop down menu. There's a section called badge layout. If I hit this right arrow, it'll span every badge layout that we've created. If you hit new, you can create a new one. What I've done is done a temporary one just so we don't have to do that setup called Somerville High School. You can edit, double click on it, it'll open it up. You could call it whatever you'd like, this Launch Secure ID Badge Designer. This is where you create it. You can import pictures. At the moment, I just went down and on the website and I downloaded the Somerville High School logo. Again, you can change this um, to anything you would like. This text, so, so, so to put a picture, this, is, this, is, this icon right here does the image. You drop it, and then over on the right side, you have data. You would select static file name, hit the browse, and you'd go to where you stored that image that you want. So it does certain files. It does JPEG file, a BMP, TIF, or a WMF. So it has to be one of those formats. So just for the training purpose, I'm going to delete this. And we'll keep it there. So you can enter in static text. Um, static text, you could say, I, I put Summer High, Somerville High School. So the way you do that is this icon right here. I drug it over. I created the size. All right, I typed in the text that I wanted to say.
You can change the font by clicking this tab. You can make it 14, you can make it bold, you can change the color. The color right here. I can make it blue. Okay. You could line it up by clicking on the hi highlighting on this, align. I can tell it to line horizontal. So now it's going to center this text in there. When I go back to this text, this one needs to be centered in my text box. So let's do this one, centered in the text box. So that's a static text, example of static text. This text, same thing, I drug this down and I sized it. If I click on, I, I click dynamic text. And what this will do is take things from our system, like the first name that you put in for a personnel or a personnel type. So you got first name, middle initial, last name, or personnel type. There's also spots that you can define a text one. Um, you could do that license plate number if for some reason you wanted it, and then you could enter them in. When you create the person, you'd have to put an entry in that section, and then it would show up on this, on this badge. Most people are using first name, last name. Personnel type's another common one. It'll say teacher or custodian or something like that. Some places choose not to put anything on the badges. That way, if the badge gets lost out in, in the city park and it says Somerville High School, then they know where that badge is working. Where if it's just a blank badge and they lost it, nobody knows that that badge is going to get you in the high school. So that's all up to you. I'm just going to show you how to set this up if you choose to use it. So. This was a dynamic view and it said first name. When I click on this one that I created, it was a dynamic view and I selected last name. This was a dynamic view and I selected personnel type. So now when I create a person, I'm going to assign this badge type, badge layout, and when I print out their badge, it's going to print this layout with their name. So it would be Joe Smith janitor or custodian and it'll look like this picture right here it'll go by the individual person so that is everything i can think of there's there's a way you could do a border you just have to there's all kinds of little settings in here that you can change background color borders if i selected a border it could be a solid border and i could pick blue. So that's that's it. I'm going to leave this one in there and you can make your, well let me click on that and you could edit this one or create your own but this is a brief description of how you could do a badge layout. So I'm going to show you a quick video on how to edit the options in the configuration tab. It's under the administration workstation. We're clicking on configuration and the first thing I'll show that you'll be doing, we'll, we'll, we'll create a group. A group will be used in other places in the system. I'm going to hit the right arrow. These are all the groups that are already programmed in there. I'm going to create a new group just for the training video. We're going to call it Elevator Lobbies. And I'm going to end it with group. Group type. These will be doors. So there's a option down here. It'll be I star door. That's the one you'll typically be using. I star is the name of the controller that all the wiring goes back to. So that is almost everything you're creating. When you create a group, you're 
almost always going to create a door group. So I star door will be the common one that you're using. Objects in the group. If I hit add, this, these are all your doors. So I'm going to scroll through here. And I'm going to select all the elevator doors. They all start with ELA. ELA is the elevator in building A, and ELC is elevator in building C. ELD um, will be the auditorium. I'm going to hit OK and then save and close. Now you'll see give it a time, it pops up in the door group. So we will edit the door, or we will select the door group later on when we set up clearances. We'll give people access to a door group. In the same tab under configuration, I'm going to show you how to do a schedule. Again, when we create a clearance, we've got to assign a door, the doors. Usually it's easier to assign a door group rather than select them individually. That's why we created the group or you, and you assign the schedule that that clearance follows. So we're going to go down here and we're going to select schedule. If I hit right arrow, these are all the schedules that are being that are in the system right now. Um, we're going to create a new one and we'll call this a lot of times it's, 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 it's important to label it what you're using that schedule for. Um, I recommend making a schedule for every single thing. So if you have elevators, follow this schedule Monday through Friday rather than um, call, making one schedule for um, normal school day and then having certain doors follow that, that normal school day. If you, if you have the main entrance isn't going to follow them, if you end up deciding to make a time, a, a time change to the main entrance normal school day, you would have that, that what, if you're selecting the same schedule on each one, it also affects the elevator. So you would have to, so I, so I recommend any door group that you do, you've created a special schedule for those so that when you go in and edit just the elevator, you're not affecting the main entrance. Um, so I'm going to create this schedule. It's going to be elevator access schedule. You can give a little description of where you're using that at down here add. I'm going to click Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Select the start time. We'll call it 0630. And we'll end it at say 5, we'll do 4 o'clock. You'll be able to edit this later. We'll delete it after 4 o'clock. You could also, I'm using the keyboard, you could also use these arrows and it'll select the different options. Holiday groups, probably not going to select. I'm going to hit save. So now we've created, let me go back into that. I want to show another helpful item is adding in the name of the label to do Monday through Friday and the time date, only because when you select a schedule, it'll appear only the, the name will appear. So at least you'll see that you're selecting the right one. So I'm going to Go Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Save. 
All right, so now we have a schedule that we've created and we can select that schedule and the other under the programming's under clearance. I'm gonna show you how to program a clearance. We're under the administration workstation. It'll be under personnel. I'm gonna hit the drop down menu and I'll see clearance. If I hit the right arrow, it'll show all the clearances. If I hit new, it'll create a new one. I'm gonna create this one, elevator, ac elevator access clearance. I'm gonna click on the tab named doors. This is going to show me all the doors and door groups. When I hit add, any door group is, let me close out of that, doors and door groups. So there should be, these are all the individual doors. It must be down at the end will be my door groups. So if I scroll all the way down to the end, the door groups that we created, we created a door group that was called elevator lobby group. I'm gonna select that and hit okay. All right, now it's asking me to assign the schedule that has followed. We created a schedule for elevator access. So in this, tab, elevator access schedule Monday through Friday. I don't know that that's, yes, that is the one I created, so I'm gonna select that. So all the doors in door group, elevator lobby door group are able to be accessed during this time of day. So I'm gonna hit save. So now we created a clearance, we gave it a schedule that it's following, and we told it what doors are allowed to be used with that clearance. Um, now when we create a person, person, and we want that person to have access, say you create a blank badge for your handicapped students, we'll call it elevator access card one, you'll assign this clearance to that person. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to add a person to the system. We'll assign a badge to them. We'll give them a badge layout. We'll assign a clearance, which allows them which doors they're allowed to use, and we'll create a personnel type. So I'm, it's all done under the administration workstation. and it will be under personnel. So if I click personnel, I go up to drop down menu. First, we'll, we created a clearance already. Now we'll create a, let's do personnel type first. If I hit the right, these are ones we've created already. Um, a lot of these will be deleted. They're for construction, Wayne J. Griffin. Um, I just created a employee contractor visitor, we have a Somerville Fire Department, Somerville Police Department, JCI. A lot of these would delete. You may create a group that says teacher, you may, or personnel type that says teacher, you may create a personnel type that says custodian. I mean, it's all, all as a matter of how you wanna use the system. Um, you could select that for your badge layout. It would say their type. You could also in the, I'll show you real quick, under the monitoring station. If I were to go to personnel, all right, if I were to go back to the administration and I wanna hit if I go to personnel and I hit the right arrow, this will show everybody that we've put in the system. Now I can sort this by personnel group. So say I wanted to see who was set up as employees. I click it again. I want to delete all the Wayne J. Griffins. 
at the end of construction so I could highlight, hold down the shift, I could go down here, and now when I right click, I could delete. So I could do them all at once instead of going searching through the system for each one of them. So that's where personnel type comes in handy is for searching your people and doing group edits. Um, so as you see, we have police department. These are all the people from the police department that we've had scheduled or, or in the system and Somerville Fire Department. There's been some people added out Suffolk Construction. These were cars, they weren't given a personnel type, but you could create a personnel type for Suffolk and then delete it after. So that's, that's where personnel type comes in handy. So we'll go back to personnel type. And I'm gonna create a personnel type for say, um, Handicap person, handicap. And I'm going to save. So now we'll be able to create a user, a personnel, and we'll assign them a personnel type of handicap. So typically schools are using their create, say, 10 badges for handicap. Some schools are creating for the individual person. Um, not always, that, that would probably work if they're always, sometimes a, a kid breaks his leg and is only gonna have this badge for a period of time. So you would create one that he's loaned out. So he would get badge handicap or, or, or elevator access one is what it could say. And um, He's, it's assigned to him and then it'll turn in and you don't have to create a new badge or print out a new badge after he's done using it. So I'm going to create a badge for personnel. I'm going to add a new personnel. And we'll call it Elevator Access 1. Over on personnel type, we'll give it that personnel type that we created, we'll call it handicap. Maybe better just to call that personnel type elevator. Um, operator name we will not do. We will go to credentials. This is where you're going to add in the card number. So if I click on add card access, right here is where you'll see. You'll write down the number that's on the back of the card that you have. I'm gonna just, I don't have a card in front of me, but I'm gonna, this, this is going to be the card number that's on there. So I, I just highlighted the zero and I edited it. I'm gonna give them a badge layout. The badge layout that we created was Somerville High School. You could give it an activation expiration date. I. I suppose if you didn't care if they turned in the card, you could end it. You could say they, they're, they're good for the month of April. And that way, if they don't return the card, it's not going to work afterwards. Um, typically, people are just making it work all the time. And then if it does get lost, under this section is where you would... So if I hit lost, what this does is allows the card to enter into the... Um, the monitoring client will show up as being used, but it won't allow them to use the door. That way, you'll know when somebody's found the card and they're trying to use it. It won't let them in the door, but at least you'll have a record that somebody's been trying to use it. Stolen would be the same way. Stolen would come up as in the entry, it would say stolen card used at main entrance, and you could, um, you could find it that way. Disabled is going to do nothing. It's not going to log in the... Um, in the log or, or, or show up or, or let them in the door. So um, temporary would just allow you to put this, this date that's in there. So we're not gonna select anything on that. 
and that would be all that you have to enter under credentials. So now I'm going to go to clearance. This is where I'm going to give this car, this user access. So we created a user or clearance that was elevator access clearance. I'm going to hit OK. So again, you see how where there's no schedule here. So the schedule was selected under the clearance. So, so this person, this elevator access card has this personnel type, the credential. This is the card number that it actually the system recognizes. Clearance will be the doors that they have access to. Custom clearance. If you, we could give them an additional. Let me go back to clearances. You don't have to do just one. So say, say you have a teacher that has teacher access, which is only, say, exterior doors. But this teacher is going to have access to, maybe she's the nurse, and you want her to have access to the nurse door. So you could, you could give her general, instead of creating an entire clearance for just the one nurse, you would assign her, say, the teacher access, and then you would add a second clearance, which would be the nurse door. So if we would have had to have created the clearance in there, but you could select a number of, so say, say this teacher, for example, has access to is the tech office. There's also a teacher office, but will also have access to the MDF and IDF clauses. I'm going to hit OK. So this person has both accesses. So you can have a number of clearances. You don't have to assign only one. I'm going to delete this one real quick. Okay, so that's all that you will need to do under person. I'm going to hit save. It needs a last name, I guess. So here, we'll do this. We'll make it elevator. See how that little, this, this here is a warning. It didn't. So when I hover over the top of it, it'll tell me what the problem was. Last name field must not be blank. So. Now if I hit save, okay, so it didn't like the number. Normally this isn't going to be a problem because you're going to have a real card number, but let me go back to, it doesn't like the card number when I just did this. So I'm going to go back to credentials. I'm going to do, pick up another number, hopefully save and close. All right, so it took that one. One, two, three, four must already be entered in there, probably. Um, so I selected it. Normally, you're going to write down the number that's on the card, and you won't have any duplicates. So I'm going to click on personnel type, and there should be the one that we created should have showed up as elevator handicap is what it showed up as. I'm going to change that personnel type just to elevator access. So I'm going to go down to back to this. I'm going to go to personnel type. Hit the right arrow to see all the ones. I'm going to double click on the handicap. I'm just going to change this to elevator. And that is all there is to adding a user to the system. Real quick, I was, but while I'm in there, I guess I should show you under personnel. We'll go back to this. We'll find. When you go to do the badge, this is where you would print the badge at. So I can preview the badge right now. This is the badge. This was the first name. This was the last name. And this was the personnel type, if you remember right. So this would show the badge layout. So now at the computer that you have the printer tied to, you'd insert that badge and you would hit print badge. It would print, print it out and you'd be able to issue the person. 
There's also the images we didn't go over when we created the badge layout, but you can select images. If the, if the badge, badging computer had a computer or it had a camera, you could take an image, you could select that image, you could capture it, it would take the picture. I'd have to have a, a, a camera attached to this computer to do that. You take the picture, you save it, it's going to show up over here in the portrait. And then when you did the badge layout, you would select portrait if you wanted that picture to appear on the badge. And now when I'm back, I'm going to remove this. And now when I'm back on badging and I hit print, if I hit preview badge, it, that picture would show up right here and show you what it's going to look like when you print it. So. Uh, we'll have to determine where the school wants to put the badge, where they want to create badges and if they're going to use that badging print, that printer. Now I'll show you how to create a door group to follow that schedule we created for the morning or unlock for the main entrance. So under configuration, hit the drop down menu to group. I'm going to hit the right arrow. I've already created it. Um, you would hit new to create a new one. I've created a main entrance group. Double clicked on it. It shows me the doors that are selected. If I wanted to add an additional door, I hit add and it scrolls down. These are all the doors in the system. So these are, these are all the main entrance. So we're good for this demonstration. I'm going to hit save and close. That's our door group. Now we have to create an event that allows that door group to unlock during the schedule that we created. So now I'm going to hit the drop down menu or, or configuration still drop down menu and I'm going to create an event. I'm going to hit the right arrow just to see what we have. I'm going to hit new. I'm going to call this morning unlock main entrance. I'm going to enable it. I'm going to arm it. I'm going to tell it what schedule this activates on. I hit the browse button and I go to that schedule we created called morning unlock main entrance. If you, if you, there's more to it here. If you scroll it over, it would give the time, the time there. It just didn't show. All right, so we're armed and we're enabled. Those are important. I'm going to scroll down to at or tab over to actions. I'm going to hit add. Drop down menu all the way to the bottom is unlock door. I'm going to select the door so that I want to unlock. Right now, it's going to show every door. If I hit this tab, if I hover over this tab here, it says display groups. And if I hit this one, display single options, so those are objects, those are the doors. If I click it, all the single doors will go away and it'll only show me the door groups. So I'm going to select on the main entrance group and I'm going to hit save. The event actions on a hardware in another time zone. Back on, I, I hit save, but I'm going to go back in there and select that just so that the error wouldn't matter. So. If I were to save that, it'd be fine because the server's in the same time zone as the controller. But just to clear that error, I, I just clicked on the event again. Under the general tab, I got in time zone. I went to just select the time zone that we're in. Again, it would have worked just fine without that. But. Now I'm going to hit save and we won't get an error. Okay, so now the morning, now, now those doors are set to unlock Monday through Friday, 6.45 to 7 a.m. And they'll lock again at 7 a.m. Okay, so I want to quickly show you the different colors of the card readers. When the door is normally secure, meaning the lock is de-energized and the door is physically closed, the light on the reader will be red solid. When you swipe the card 
and the lock energizes, it flashes between red and green. When you open the door, it goes back to red. If I hold the door open too long, or if I wedge the door open, it'll start flashing red and yellow. So when I secure the door again, it'll go back to solid. So those are the different LEDs that you'll see.